Ah, sweet pepper. This nutritious vegetable is a staple item in the Calyx Growing Things garden. That's because we use a lot of it in salads and to flavor many of our favorite dishes. And once you experience the intense aroma of a freshly reaped sweet pepper, you wouldn't want to go back to buying sweet pepper in the supermarket. So, keep watching and we will demonstrate how easy it is to grow this delicious vegetable in your garden. <music> Welcome back to the Calyx Growing Things channel. I am Thelma. Well, we have just completed a series on backyard gardening, but we got a request from a viewer to show how to grow sweet pepper, and that's what we'll do today. We'll be taking you through all of the stages, from bed preparation, through to transplanting, caring for the crop, and all the way up to harvest. We can do that because we always have a series of sweet pepper beds growing here. For our regular viewers, we say welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, we encourage you to subscribe because that's the main motivation that we need to keep going and producing informative videos such as this one. And if you're wondering what this interesting structure is next to me, there's another one on the other side. It's a frame for a dragon fruit. It's a new addition to the garden we are experimenting with. We got two small cuttings from a friend, Hi Reg, about six months ago, and we've been propagating it. Now it's all a rage in some parts of the world, so hey, why not Jamaica also? So we expect it will turn out, but it will take us about another six to eight months to really have the kind of results that we're looking for in order to bring that to you. So as you keep saying, subscribe, and keep watching so you don't miss these interesting um, videos that we intend to produce in due course. Now it's early morning and there's lots to do with the sweet pepper. So let's get going. Let's take a look first at the growing conditions for sweet pepper. Like other vegetables, sweet pepper does best in well-drained soils, preferably one that has been enriched with organic matter. A sandy loam or a clay loam soil would be fine. Or, of course, if you're growing in pots, then you select your well-drained potting mix. The location should receive at least six hours of sunlight, although some partial shade is good to minimize sun scald. Sweet pepper does not set fruits well in hot weather, so avoid growing sweet pepper in the summer, especially at lower elevation. If your climate is relatively cool, you may grow sweet pepper year-round. If you're bringing a new area into production, and if it is a relatively heavy soil, it would be a good idea to add manure and turn the soil to a depth of about 6 inches. If you do not have manure or compost, you may mix in a granular fertilizer, one that is high in phosphorus, such as 11 22, 22 or 14 28 14. Use about one pound of fertilizer for every 10 foot length of bed. If it is a bed in which you have already grown several crops, it is sufficient just to add a top layer of organic matter and turn this slightly into the soil before planting. Watering after the manure application will help to speed up the decomposition process. It's also a good idea to allow about two weeks between the completion of the bed preparation and the planting to allow for the buildup of microorganisms in the soil. And before you've completed your bed preparation, make sure you've identified a source of good quality sweet pepper seedlings. A good quality sweet pepper seedling is between 5 to 7 weeks old, 4 to 6 inches tall, has 4 true leaves, nice green leaves, no sign of diseases or pests, and certainly no spots, no insect damage. Next, 
we'll look at transplanting seedlings. The sweet peppers are lined out at 18 to 24 inches apart and set so that they each have maximum spacing. They're offset a bit from each other, otherwise called staggering your plants in the rows. And you notice that we're looking, we're using larger seedlings here. That's something we tend to do in the calyx garden because of the limited space we want when we plant them that they take off right away. But certainly if you're doing a fairly large location or you're buying seedlings, the smaller seedlings in the seedling flats are good enough. And as you handle the seedlings, try not to disturb the root ball. You want to minimize any transplanting shock and give them a healthy start in life. Now that we've finished planting, let's move on to routine crop maintenance activities such as watering, fertilizing, mulching, and minimizing crop losses due to pests and diseases. Let me start with watering. Your watering schedule would depend on the conditions at your location. For example, is it hot, dry, or windy? The best thing to do is to test whether the top three or so inches of the soil are dry before watering. But let the water soak into the soil at least six to ten inches. That way you have to water less frequently. Now, let's look at feeding your sweet pepper crop after you've planted it. There is a wide assortment of fertilizer products on the market. If you're using conventional granular fertilizer, it's recommended that you make three equal applications of the fertilizer. The first before transplanting, the second about six to eight weeks after transplanting when the plants have started flowering, and the third after the second harvest. If you're growing organically, check your farm store for available products and follow the recommendations on the label. In the calyx garden, when we grow sweet pepper and tomato, we use manure at planting and weekly applications of compost tea up to eight weeks. Then we switch to a soluble 71240 fertilizer at 10 weeks and at 12 weeks to promote flowering. But I must add that these fertilizer practices should be taken as a general guide only. Your conditions are likely to be different from ours. Plus, changing conditions will require you to make adjustments. The best advice is to monitor your plants and make fertilizer adjustments as necessary. Next up, general maintenance activities in your sweet pepper bed. Where well, sweet pepper doesn't necessarily have to be staked, but if you are exposing the plants to wind, it is best that you provide some support because of course, once the bearing starts, the plant has quite a weight to carry. And here you can see the support a little clearer. You really just start off with a support at the base and observe what happens depending on the wind. But as you see, the support can be anything, a single stake, or we tend to use cord because you require fewer stakes that way as the crop grows. If you have grass clippings or dried leaves, use these to mulch your beds, which helps to conserve moisture and reduce the growth of weeds. Controlling weeds also helps with pest management as there are fewer hiding places and sources of food for pests and diseases. Examine your plants every three to five days or so, especially under the leaves, to detect any pests before they become well established. And now let's look at crop protection. We covered crop protection measures in our recent video entitled How to Grow Healthy Crops in Your Backyard. And all of those recommendations apply to sweet peppers. So if you haven't seen that video, we recommend that you take a look at it. Luckily for sweet pepper, it's not bothered too much by the main diseases that some other crops in our garden face, which are mildews, and blights. While these may occur occasionally, we are more likely to come in contact with 
white flies and aphids, both of which hide on the underside of leaves. In terms of diseases, you're likely to see spots on the leaves from time to time, but in general, these do not affect the yield of your crop. And if you see something like this on your fruits, it's not caused by a disease. It is blossom end rot, which occurs if the plant experiences moisture stress during fruit formation and is not able to extract the calcium from the soil that it needs to build thick cell walls. Yet another reason to maintain adequate soil moisture. And these last two images are sun scald on the fruits, which occurs when there's insufficient leaves to protect the fruits from excessive sunlight. In terms of safe organic pest control products, neem gives good control of aphids, white flies, and other sucking insects. And Bt controls cutworms and caterpillars. There are other products, of course, so check your garden center for advice on what is available and recommended for peppers in your area. And to catch my breath, as we say, I'm going to show you a selection of sweet pepper plants at various stages as they progress from six weeks through to harvest at 12. So these sweet pepper plants are now, we're ready to pick the first fruits. Notice how nice and healthy they are. They're about two, two and a half, three feet tall. No spots on the leaves at all. Nice, green, healthy plants. At the first reaping, you would expect to reap one or at most two fruits from each plant. Squeeze gently to make sure the fruit is firm before picking. We'll get more fruits from the second harvest. This is a pretty good second harvest from just four plants. And don't forget, now is the time to make that last application of fertilizer to sustain the production of more food such as these. Now that we've covered all the essential aspects of growing sweet peppers, I hope you will take the information and grow your own sweet peppers in your garden. It was our pleasure bringing this video to you. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed, please, we are encouraging you to subscribe. For much more information on growing sweet peppers, as well as 49 other crops, please check our book on crop production and harvesting, available on Amazon, as well as Book Fusion. And until next video, this is Thelma in the Calyx Green Things Garden saying bye-bye.